One of the more prominent additions in Houdini 19 has been an upgrade to Vellum, and I'm very thrilled that Vellum by now supports Fluids, that is a simplified implementation of Fluids, which was described in the original XPBD paper. Albeit simplified, it's still very powerful and can be used not only to generate your standard fluid pores or swirls, but also this, my take on a technique called acrylic pouring, and we're going to emulate this very popular YouTube crafts project inside of Houdini 19 using Vellum. So to set this up in Houdini, I want to drop down a tube, dive in there, Make sure this tube has end caps and increase the columns number to make this a bit more roundish here and then increase its radius scale to four and its height to 0.1. So make this a really flat tube like a disc. And I want to use three of those discs to create three layers of paint with differing density with the lightest paint being the lowest layer and successively increasing dense layers on top of it. And that when wired into a fluid simulation will cause these weird bubbling up of underlying paint and the mixing and swirling of it. So let's copy and paste this tube two more times, like so. And let's take the middle tube here and move it up 0.1 units. And take the last tube and move that up 0.2 units. So that now when I merge those three tubes using a merge node, wiring in all those three tubes in here, I can see they sit flush on top of each other. All right, to set up the fluids, I'm gonna use the vellum configure grain node which I'll wire in below our first tube here, highlight it, check create points from volume, and set its type not to be grain, but to be fluid now. Now those grains are a bit too large for my taste, so let's scale them down to 0 0.025. Let's check jitter to prevent those artifacts here. So now they are randomly scattered into this volume here. And let's increase the packing density to a value of two, thus ensuring that our volume is densely packed with grains, with points which will serve as my fluid particles. If I dial down physical attributes here, I wanna check viscosity and surface tension, as well as set our mass to calculate uniformly by a density attribute. What that allows me to do is dial in the weight of my fluid by increasing or decreasing its density and by setting viscosity and surface tension, dialing in how gooey versus how liquidy, how splashy our fluid behaves. For the bottommost layer here, I wanna set my fluid's density to 400, which will be the lightest fluid and set my viscosity and surface tension to 10. Again, I found out these values by lots of trial and error when preparing the setup. Now I'm gonna copy and paste this vellum constraint two more times, wiring in the respective constraints in the second and third tube here. So for the second tube, I wanna leave all those settings identical, just increasing my density a bit, making it a bit heavier to 450. Same goes for the last vellum constraint configure here for my third tube, where I set the density even heavier to 500. Maybe save this. And now when I highlight this merge here, I can see those three fluid layers sitting on top of each other and they all have the same color. So let's fix that and assign a few different colors and also group those individual layers in respective point groups by using a group node first, which we're gonna set two points. Let's call this group PTS01. Copy and paste this node two more times, calling the second group here PTS02 and the third group PTS03. And let's wire in those group nodes under the respective vellum configures. Just like this. So now when I middle mouse on the merge, I can see I created three point groups, each with around 60,000 points in them. So what I could do now, either by dropping down three color nodes up here or after the merge, taking each of those individual groups, PTS1 maybe, and giving them a respective color, maybe like a mint or teal green like this, then using another color set to work on PTS02, maybe coloring this in a darkish gray here like so, and just leaving the top layer white. Also to give the simulation that I wanna set up a bit more of an organic behavior. What I wanna do is not have the viscosity set on these points of each of those liquids identical, but have a bit of variance, a bit of a noise in their viscosity. And I can do that up here when I configure the individual layers of my paint here using an attribute noise, which I will set up to work on a float then wire in here after the point group. Let's just highlight this one here. And I wanna delete the color and instead set it to work on the viscosity by multiplying the viscosity with the noise we're generating in here, checking enable remap ramp, and then making sure our values are not between zero and one. Because when you think about it, multiplying our viscosity by zero would get rid of the viscosity and we don't want that. So let's dial this down and set the first point here to a value of 0 0.5. So our viscosity is now multiplied with a value of 0 0.5 to one, scaling our viscosity respectively and giving this a bit more of an organic look. Let's copy and paste this node two more times, just cutting these wires and wiring in the nodes respectively for the second and third layer of our paint. And the only thing I wanna do here is offset the viscosity a bit. So each layer of paint has a different non-coherent variance in the viscosity with regards to the other layers by just dialing in the offset here. And let's just take the middle one and set it to one, one, two, three. Again, just trial and error. 
and one, four, five, six. As mentioned in a previous tutorial, if we wanted to visualize the viscosity here, what we can do is drop down a visualize node. And that has been reworked a bit in H19. So let's highlight this one here. And under the visualizers here, right click in here and under the visualize one, which specifies the node we just dropped, let's add a color visualizer here. And we want it to visualize a round attribute on the points, which is called viscosity like this. Let's close this. And now you can see we've got this three distinct layers varying in their viscosity. Let's add more variants by varying these paints masses, this time uniformly across all those points. So after the merge here, I'll drop down another attrib noise, wire that in after the merge here, set it to work on a float. That is not CD, but the mass. Again, we want to multiply the pre-existing value by the noise we are generating in here. Again, I want to remap the noise I'm generating here. So not to multiply our mass by a range between zero and one, but by a value between 0 0.5 and 1.5 scaling our mass of our individual particles here accordingly. The only other thing I did down here in the offset is I dialed in a bit of an offset just so it gets some nice pattern in the area where I'm simulating and rendering later. Again, found out that value by trial and error. Under the visualizer here, let's just wire in the mass and under the visualizers tab, let's just not visualize viscosity, but set this to visualize the mass. And now you can see we are also giving a bit more of an organic distribution of the mass of our liquids instead of just setting it uniformly. Now, before we finally set up our simulation, one last thing I need to provide is a collider to keep in all that liquid here when we simulate it. So let's just use a, another tube up here. Let's just copy the first tube here, paste that on the side here. Let's just scale its height a bit to 0.4 units and uncheck end caps and move it up one click here to 0.1 and then attach a poly extrude to give this a bit of thickness. So let's extrude it 0.1 units and check output back. And this is what I'll be using as a collider in my solver, which I am ready to drop down now. So let's move these colors and visualizers to the side. And after this attrib noise, I'll be dropping down a vellum solver with the simulation geometry being this stream of grains here goes in the first slot. And then I need to provide a constraint geometry as well. So again, I'm going to use a merge. And after the vellum constraint configures here up here, I'll wire in all those second slots here in this second merge. The only thing I'll have to take care of or pay attention to is that the constraint geometry is wired in in the same order as the main geometry is in this merge here. After I've done that, I can use that in the second input slot to provide my solver with the constraints. And finally, I'll wire in this extruded tube here as a collider in the third input here. Let's highlight the solver. So you can see our collision geometry is coming through here. That's this blue outline geometry. And in the solver, the first thing I want to do is add a ground plane. Let's just look at it from the side by pressing space and three in the viewport. That's a side view. And let's move this down a tiny bit to minus 0 0.052. So it's its flush below the lowest grains here. Let's get back to our perspective viewport by pressing space and one over the viewport. And for the simulation, I want to tweak or set up my solver a bit. So grain simulation always takes a few sub steps. By default, Houdini recommends five sub steps. And I can dial back the constraint iterations quite drastically to say 10. Also under the simulation tab, in my case, I want to increase the cache memory just so that we can cache maybe the full timeline here. And I've got the RAM for it. So let's go for it. Let me just check under the forces tab. I want to dial in a bit of velocity damping, taking out a bit of the overall velocity, making this a bit more gooey in its behavior. And that should be it for now. Let's just save this. And after the vellum solver, let's just take these two color nodes and wire them in in the first slot in here so we can see those different colors of our liquid coming through. And now let's just save this, keep our fingers crossed and simulate it. Maybe toggle real time down here and hit play. So after an eternity of simulation, we are greeted with this, which I think is a very nice starting point for our simulation. So now we can tweak it. And the main thing I want to do is definitely decrease my grain size and thus increase my particle count as the simulation is very coarse and only served as kind of a test bed for setting this up. So for rendering, what I'm going to do is increase the particle count, re-simulate this, which again will take forever. Vellum is quick-ish, but not really real time. So expect long simulation times for this kind of fluid mixing effect. So I hope this technique inspires you to test out other non-traditional approaches when it comes to fluid simulation, now that it's available in Vellum. However, also the traditional, the classic ones, the fluid splashes are lots and lots of fun. And I had a good time playing around with them in Vellum. So if you have any inspirational technique using the new Vellum fluids, just let us know. We are always happy if you share your results and your artwork. And if you want to support us or learn more about Houdini, you might want to consider becoming a patron of ours. And to everyone already supporting us on Patreon, thanks so much, folks. Without your help, Intagma in this form just plainly wouldn't be possible. With a very special thank you going out to important-looking pirates, Rodeo FX, Sean Edwards, Chris Hebert, and Rafik Anadol. 
Thanks so much, guys. And with that, as always, it is cheers and goodbye.